Hey guys, it's Roberto. So I'm um, doing a live video because I wanted to get something um, you know, off my chest because I, I just read something a little earlier uh, this morning I'm here at Barnes & Noble. I'm parked. I'm not driving while recording, so don't worry about that. But this was an interview with um, Cheryl Sandberg, who I've spoken favorably about in the past. She is the COO of Facebook, one of the platforms that I and many of you use uh, in social media. She's also a best-selling author, and she's done a, a lot of wonderful things. I've spoken very well of her in the past. She's actually one of my favorite leading women in uh, the tech space. But in an interview, she actually said some things that I think were, I think irresponsible is the word I want to use right now, and a little bit, uh, I would say, dismissive, and I would say hypocritical. And the thing is, I like Sheryl Sandberg, but I can't agree with her on this. So she was talking about personal branding, and she's not an advocate of it. She's not a fan of it at all. In fact, if I think I'm quoting the article, and this is a Next Web article, you can feel free to Google it after this. I'll try and link it up later. But what she said was, if you're thinking of building your personal brand, please don't. You don't have a brand. Crest has a brand. We are not... Uh, products we are not I think she said you know to be marketed or packaged and when we are it's inauthentic and the thing is I think that this is I think dismissive and I think it's a little hypocritical and she went on to talk about the fact that you know she doesn't have a personal brand she has a voice she has a personal brand we all have a personal brand whether we use it or not whether we acknowledge it or not whether we build it or not whether we are consciously you know doing anything with it we have a personal brand and for her to say that, I think, is dismissive. And in my opinion, for her to say that she said that when I see someone building uh, their personal brand, I know it's wrong. I mean, I just really can't understand that statement coming from somebody who themselves is a best-selling author, um, has been a public speaker before, and also is the COO of a company that benefits disproportionately from personal branding and from influencer marketing and it, I, like that bothers me but here's the other thing what bothers me is I don't think I don't think that she's appreciating the fact that in leveraging and building a personal brand for her to say that to somebody that's wrong she's being so dismissive of many people there is a woman that I met uh, while traveling to a conference she was at this conference because in a very short period of time she built um, a vlog. She built a, van, a family vlog. She's a mother of four. And for the first time in her life, she is making six figures. She's making a six-figure income because she built her personal brand and she, um, you know, shared the story of her family. And it gave her an opportunity that corporate America was not going to give her. It gave her an opportunity. She wasn't going to be able to work in Silicon Valley per se because those weren't her skills. She didn't have those opportunities presented to her. She didn't go to the right schools for that per se. That wasn't her circumstance or situation. But you know what? By telling the story that she knows best, the story of her and her family, she was able to do that. And part of that she attributed when I talked to her, the fact because I built my personal brand. Because I built my personal brand and I influenced her and I helped her start her YouTube channel by watching my content, she was able to do something that she wasn't able to do. My friend Tim Schmoyer, because he built his personal brand, there are marriages that have been saved because of his family vlogs. There are businesses that have been built because of what he did with video creators. There are children that are born today because of Tim Schmoyer and it's because he made his voice matter. Because when Sheryl Sandberg says that we're not to be marketed or packaged and we're not a product, okay, so let me let me play uh, devil's advocate here. All right, Cheryl, so if I'm, I'm inauthentic if I package or market myself by default and building a personal brand is wrong. So that means that I can go ahead and I can just wear my t-shirts and jeans and I can walk into Silicon Valley, not wear shirt and tie. I can be 110% authentic and passionate and I don't need to position or package myself favorably to the decision makers and I don't need to market myself and have awareness of my name in the right circles, right? So uh, apparently I don't need to market 
or package myself and I can walk into Silicon Valley and know my stuff cold and I will be respected and I will be, um, you know, I'll just walk away with the job I want or I'll walk away with the VCs in my, uh, you know, having my back. That's what'll happen, right? No, that's not what'll happen. When anybody walks into a boardroom, they are packaged and they're polished and they're marketed. When you are a COO of a company and you're going to those meetings, Cheryl, you're marketing, you're packaging yourself, you are getting people to sign on board. So, I mean, I think that it's hypocritical to say that. I think it's disingenuous. I think it's intellectually dishonest. And I don't throw that word around. I think it's intellectually dishonest to say that building a personal brand is wrong, especially in an age where people are finding not only tremendous success, but they're finding that they can make their voice matter. Because to use your word, Cheryl, a voice, having a voice. Okay, so you have a voice. But why does your voice matter, Cheryl? It's because you are the COO of Facebook. That's why I'm making a video response to you right now is because you're the COO of Facebook, because you're a best-selling author, because that is who you are, that is who we know you as, that is what your personal brand is, and your voice projects, your, vo your voice carries weight. My voice doesn't carry the weight that yours does, Cheryl, because my personal brand isn't as big as yours. I'm not a Silicon Valley guy. I'm not, you know, I'm not a, a millionaire. I'm just a, you know, quote unquote schmuck YouTuber with a personal brand. I haven't made a million dollars, you know. I don't even have a million subscribers, but you know, I use my voice and I use my platform to reach people, to help people, to better their lives. And guess what? I've never had to do it by being inauthentic. I've never had to do it by compromising my values. I've never had to do it by being anything but exactly who I am and standing for what I believe in. I've never had to be inauthentic in marketing myself. I've never had to be inauthentic in packaging myself. When I had to do that, it was in corporate America, Cheryl. It was in working in a tech company that I had to do that, where I had to put on a facade, where I had to sell myself, where I had to put on a veneer of polish versus texture. When I'm here in YouTube, when I'm operating with my personal brand, when I'm on uh, podcast interviews, ones where I've talked about you favorably in the past, I am being myself. I'm being real. When I'm live streaming on YouTube Live, unrehearsed with no script, no teleprompters, which I don't use anyway, when um, I don't know for sure if anybody's watching, when I'm doing this in like 720p with a bad internet connection, in the blazing hot sun, in my car, with imperfect audio, with the air condition blaring in the background, I'm being authentic and I'm being real and people respect it. And it's why my voice thus matters to them and it allows me to have a positive impact influence in their life and a positive impact in their lives. That's what quote unquote a personal brand is and what it does. A personal brand is every time that I'm speaking and I'm on a stage and I come off of that stage and I hang around for two hours in the hall doing Q&A with people, asking their, answering their questions, helping them specifically with what they have going on, that's me being real. That's not being unauthentic, that's not fake. But guess what, if I didn't market myself, if I didn't market myself, I wouldn't have the impact to be able to do that and change those lives. If I didn't do that, if I didn't market myself, and if I didn't package myself, that voice would be drowned out in a sea of people. Many of them are snake oil salesmen. Many of them are selling people false dreams and false hopes and misinformation. Many of them are selling people scam products and info products and, you know, $10,000 masterminds and, you know, $3,000 courses that won't do jack for them. But I'm here helping people day in and day out, day in and day out, every day with my personal brand. And it's not just me. It's people like Tim Schmoyer. It's people like Amy Schmittauer. It's people like Gary Vaynerchuk. It's people like Grant Cardone. It's people like Sonny Leonard Doozy. It's people like Sean Canal. It's people like my friend Owen Hemsap, who shares his personal journey, not only his business advice and everything like that, but shares the story of him beating cancer time and time again. And being there for his family while still building and growing his business year after year after year the minute he walks out of chemotherapy. So when you say that if anybody is thinking of building their personal brand, please don't, Cheryl. I got news for you. Those people that I've talked about that built their, their personal brand have impacted tens of thousands of lives. I'm standing here today alive because Tony Robbins built his personal brand. Okay, and someone was able to tell me about Tony Robbins in my deepest, darkest times, and I was able to 
get like a breather and get some perspective and keep on pushing and keep on pushing and realizing that I had value to give, that I had something to offer. So when you tell somebody, Cheryl, don't start their personal brand, don't share their story, don't market themselves, don't package themselves, I don't know what you're talking about. Because even the CEO of your company has a personal brand and has leveraged it and has leveraged it for the good of other people and continues to build that personal brand and is doing it right now. And I don't know if he's going to run for office or not, but if he does and if he wins, it will be because he built a powerful personal brand. Like him or hate him, our current president probably won more than anything because of the personal brand that he built. Okay, so don't tell people, oh, if you're going to build a personal brand, please don't. If you're building a personal brand, you're inauthentic. Who are you to say that? You don't know them. You don't know that they're going to be inauthentic. You want to talk about inauthentic? I mean, you know what? I don't think anybody who decides to dress up and wear a suit and tie is being inauthentic per se. I think they're representing themselves as well as they want to to achieve their goals. And I think they're wearing a suit and tie because maybe that empowers them. I don't think that when um, my female friends put on their makeup in the morning that they're being fake or they're being inauthentic. So for you to say that anybody, Sheryl Sandberg, who builds a personal brand is packaging and marketing themselves in an inauthentic way and that you know it's wrong, who are you to say that you know it's wrong? You could say that you think it's wrong, it makes you uncomfortable. You could say that you believe it's wrong and I would respect that. But for you to have the presumption to say that you know it's wrong, you don't know what's right for everybody. Just because you've built um, a great career and you have that experience and in building a company it gave you a voice that path is not available to every single human being on the planet let alone every person in the United States of America they don't have that opportunity I didn't have the opportunity to um, be authentic in corporate America I end up having to wear a mask I end up having to be inauthentic I end up having to be packaged and polished and marketed in a way that didn't resonate with who I was and what was beating in my chest but building my personal brand and building something my own allowed me to be authentic and to connect with people to collect with tens of thousands of people that did respect me that did take me as myself and did resonate with me so for you to say if you're gonna build a personal brand please don't I don't respect that, Cheryl. I mean, I respect you on so many other things. I admire you on so many other things, but this is a place where we're going to fundamentally disagree. I think that if someone wants to build a personal brand, they should. I think that people like the young woman I talked about who built a personal brand and was able to make six figures for the first time in her life, if they listen to your advice because of the weight and prestige that your voice carries, they could be cheating themselves out of tremendous opportunity that can not only change their lives, change the lives of their family, but it could, it could impact tens of thousands of people what they could do. Do you know how many people are, uh, will never be the same and have a successful business today because Gary Vaynerchuk decided to build his personal brand instead of just continue to run his family business after he grew it from $5 million to $60 million. Gary Vaynerchuk decided to build his personal brand. Do you know how many, many people have been impacted by that? Do you know how many businesses have been built because of that? Do you know how many lives have been changed or saved because of that? Do you know how many people went on to become great entrepreneurs and built tremendous businesses because of that and if people read this article that you did with next web and they take it to heart because they respect you because of the value and weight of your word your voice and your personal brand you might have cheated them out of the greatest success they could have of their life so I disagree I completely disagree with you, Sheryl Sandberg, on this. I disagree with you. And I know that your voice carries more weight than mine. You're the COO of Facebook. And I'm a 33-year-old kid who's never made a million dollars and doesn't work in Silicon Valley at one of the greatest digital companies of all time. So maybe my voice doesn't matter as much as yours does because I don't have as much of a tremendous personal brand as you because I don't have as much as of a tremendous career and a litany of accomplishments as you. My voice doesn't matter. My personal brand doesn't matter. I'm wrong and I'm inauthentic and I'm another person chasing the Kardashian life, right? I mean, because I don't think that that's what you really mean, Cheryl, but that's what you make people feel when you say something like that and you're dismissive of all these people. They're out here working their butts off 
hustling, trying to make a difference, trying to have a voice, trying to be their best selves, trying to represent themselves in a way that is authentic but still can have an impact and can have reach because it matters. Because reach and impact matters. You work at Facebook. You know this. I'm not telling you something you don't know. You know that reach matters. You guys are trying to reach every human being on the planet. You're trying to connect every human being on the planet. And you know what? A lot of us are using your platform to grow our personal brands so that we can reach as many people on the planet as possible and we can help them or provide them with tremendous value. So, you know, when you say don't build your personal brand, and I think about people that I know that have met the love of their life because they built a personal brand. When I know people that have built six and seven figure businesses because they built a personal brand that we're not gonna be able to do that in corporate America, that we're not gonna be able to go to Silicon Valley like you and be successful. When I think about all the uh, female entrepreneurs I know, when I think about all the mothers I know who were mommy vloggers, I went to a conference in Ohio, in Sandusky last year, um, bloggy conference, and I met so many tremendous female entrepreneurs and stay-at-home mothers that were bloggers, that were vloggers, that were podcasters, that built their personal brand, told the story of their family, told the story of their struggles in life, told the stories of their career, and the difference and the impact it made, the appreciation it made me feel for my own mother. I, I When I think about the fact that if they took your advice, they would have said, you know what, I just won't bother because, you know what, Cheryl has a point. I'm not Crest. I'm not Nike. Uh, who am I to build a personal brand? You know what? I, I When I think about that, I just feel that you've used your voice in this one instance in a way that I think is irresponsible because it's going to cheat people out of opportunity. It's going to cheat people out of something that can change their life and change the life of others. And so I think that you used your voice in this one instance in a way that's irresponsible. I love your book. I love um, I love the fact that you are one of the leading women in tech. And I love that you reined in some of like, you know, the things at Facebook that needed to be reined in with practicality. But in this one instance, I cannot agree with you. I will not agree with you. I will adamantly disagree with you. And this is my response. Um, you know, there's someone in the comments that's saying, you know what, I think she's just out of touch. I agree with that. And I can't blame it on a generation gap because again, one of your contemporaries in terms of age, um, actually more than one, Tony Robbins, Gary Vaynerchuk, these are people who understand the value and the power of personal brand and its ability to change lives. These are two of the smartest people in business. They're bona fide millionaires. So if people aren't gonna take my word for it, hey, you know what? I'm just a lowly YouTuber trucking along in the world you know, sweating my butt off in front of a Barnes & Noble. You don't want to believe me? Believe the smartest people in business and entrepreneurship, but more importantly, believe what's in your own gut. Cheryl says she knows that personal branding is wrong. I think that you probably know better what's right or what's wrong for you. I'm not going to tell you what's right or what's wrong for you. I'm going to put things on the table. I'm going to tell you what I believe. I'm going to tell you my opinions. I'm going to try and back as many of those opinions up with data and facts because that's what I believe in. And I'm going to leave it to you to make your own decision. I'm not going to tell you that not doing a personal brand is wrong or that doing a personal brand is wrong. I'm going to tell you to do what it is that you feel and you believe in your gut is the right thing and do it with as much smarts as possible. Do it with as much practicality as possible. Do it with the advice and guidance of your friends and family and mentors and look at data and look at data. And I think, Cheryl, if you look at the data of history, everybody has a personal brand, whether they build it or not, whether they leverage it or not, whether they're consciously aware of it or not. Their name goes before them like a banner. The term personal brand comes from the word branding. The word branding comes from the word brand, which we know was a seal and symbol that people use to identify property and ownership and also the banners that were carried into battle representing a kingdom, a group, a tribe, a family. So guess what? Everybody wants their name out there. Everyone wants a story associated with their name that speaks to their values, their accomplishments, and who they are. And to say that people shouldn't do anything with that 
shouldn't make that investment themselves if they really want to because you quote unquote know it's wrong to you I think is out of touch I think it's irresponsible I think it's dismissive I don't claim to know that it's wrong I don't claim to know that it's dismissive I don't claim to know that it's reeks of hypocrisy I'm telling you that that's what I think that's what I feel that's what I believe and I leave it to the rest of you so guys let me know in the comments. I know this is a live video, so whatever you've been saying isn't going to show up right here. But I appreciate you guys tuning in for what is a little bit of a rant and my personal response to uh, Cheryl Sandberg, CEO of Facebook, on this. I'm going to try and link up the article from Next Web so you guys can read it for yourself and make sure that I'm not taking what she said out of context. There's a possibility that, hey, I might have taken this out of context. I don't believe I did, but you guys will let me know in the comments whether you agree with me, whether you disagree. Let me know your thoughts and feelings on personal branding. And if you want to continue the conversation, we can do that in the comment section after this uh, publishes the YouTube, or you can feel free to tweet at me at Roberto Blake, and feel free to share this with anyone that you know that's trying to build their personal brand and is feeling a little discouraged right now. All right, you guys, go out there, create something awesome today take care by the way this was not today's planned video there will be um, an updated video that um, is not a rant that is edited and polished and marketed and not at all authentic right because that's what personal branding is right all right you guys take care